2009 World Junior Player of the Year had four nominees. The winner of that award was actually Aaron Cruden, who most rugby fans, if you're as old as me anyway, or a bit younger, well, should be aware of him. Um, the other guys were Carl Ferns from England, Richard Kingy from Australia, and Winston Stanley, also from New Zealand. Uh, Winston was one of the nominees, as I mentioned. Cruden was the guy who won that award. His career seemed to pan out pretty well. But how about for the nominees who maybe didn't quite get the same accolades as uh, as him? We'll go through Winston's career today, and you guys can let me know your thoughts on any memories of him. To be honest, you can probably see from the board if you've already looked at it, Winston uh, ended up being a bit of a bit part player wherever he went. So my memories of him are, uh, are pretty sparse. Uh, he's also got a pretty famous name. Uh, I think it's his uncle. Joe Stanley is an All Black, and his um, his brother Benson was a three cap All Black. So there's a lot of Stanleys associated with New Zealand rugby. So it's kind of easy to get him lost in in that famous surname. But Winston, in his own right, did have a uh, a professional rugby career that was largely uh, cut short by injury. It started off pretty well for Winston. Uh, under 19s level, he wins the championship. Uh, under 19s World Championship with uh, with New Zealand in 2007, and then two years later, uh, the Under 20s Championship with um, with again the, the Baby Blacks uh, in 2009. That's where he gets his nomination for World Junior Player of the Year. He also makes his debut for for Auckland in 2007. That's at NPC levels, at the level below Super Rugby, and then in 2009 he makes his debut for for the Blues. Um, so, you know, he gets to that kind of, apart from international level, he gets to that elite level at a very young age. However, uh, the Blues were pretty stacked with midfielders at that time. Like I mentioned, his brother Benson was there, Luke McAllister was there, Ma'anonu was there. So it was a pretty, it was a pretty competitive environment for Winston to try and crack through. And he does only get six caps in his time with the Blues. And he spends pretty much the entire 2010 season out with a shoulder injury and shoulder injuries would definitely become uh, a bit of a bane of his, of his rugby career. To be fair, he, he has multiple shoulder reconstructions in, uh, in his career in 2010, it's both shoulders need to have surgery on them. So, uh, yeah, he, he starts all right. And then has uh, a bit of a, a speed bump, which at that age is a, is a bit of a, um, I don't know it's a, it's a bit of a development killer. You would imagine if you, if you'd had a bit of kind of injury free time to learn from those guys who are in your camp, maybe that sets you on a better a better path. But having essentially a year off, uh, not that helpful. Uh, with opportunities at the Blues Limited, he moves to Australia now. Winston is actually born in Australia, so I've seen interviews from the time. Um, where he kind of talks about being Australian el eligible and maybe, you know, um, talks about the potential of playing for the Wallabies if things go that way. Although he, at the time, admitted, you know, that's that's kind of a long way away. But he did talk about the fact that he was an Aussie eligible prospect and that probably made him more attractive to the likes of the force. Um, so maybe promised him, I don't know if they promised him, but certainly uh, the prospect of more minutes and more game time was, uh, was an attractive one for him. And interestingly, 20 games that he gets for the force is the most that he gets with any of his clubs at this level. Like at, For Auckland, I think he played 30-odd. Uh, for Northland, he played five, played five. That's like at NPC level. But at this level, just below test level, the most he gets for any one team is 20, which is uh, given you get, you know, almost 20 games in a season, That's um, that's not all that... Not all that um, easy for him. He gets a dislocated shoulder in 2012. And he has another shoulder injury in 2013 during his time with the force. So it seems to me, and as I said, I don't really remember his career that clearly. It was it was quite disjointed. And there's a lot of this is me just going through his career numbers and, and reports from the time. But it seems like he was never really able to get back into a kind of injury-free season to get back in the swing of things. Things don't work out for the force. He comes back to New Zealand. He talks uh, about the prospect of kind of getting back into that New Zealand development system and how it's kind of centrally managed and whatnot. Um, he signs with the, the Highlanders under Jamie Joseph. He plays a preseason game against the Brumbies. 
He plays one game against the Chiefs, and then he doesn't feature again for the Highlanders in their season. Uh, again, there's there's some pretty big names in that Highlanders team. I think Malachi Fekitoa was there at the time. So opportunities limited for him in the midfield. Uh, he does, though, manage to, at that point, kind of switch his sights from the All Blacks, maybe, to the Wallabies, maybe, and then to, to Manu Samoa. So 2014, he does appear twice as a substitute for Manu Samoa, scores a try uh, in a game against Canada. He signs for Harlequins in the Premiership. Uh, Harlequins, he spends a few years there, but again, I haven't followed his career there. But by the looks of things, again, it's a bit of a bit part career. 19 caps, and then by age 29, uh, he has had to retire in the year 2018 after essentially a fifth shoulder reconstruction. He had hamstring issues at Harlequins. So 19 caps in a couple of years at Harlequins is, uh, is likewise kind of not that conducive to what you would call a um you know a full-on career so after his rugby he went on did some studies and now he is working kind of for an accounting firm as like a business advisor so yeah it's uh it's quite the turn when you look at that potential um as a kind of age grade player under 20s success under 19 success played for a really good school Auckland grammar uh here in new zealand and then yeah, a mixture of, of injuries and not able to get game time. Saw his career, you know, really, really limited in the number of caps he get. I mean, he's, he's a he's a test level player. He gets three caps, one in 2016 and two in 2014 for Samoa, which is an achievement that most people will never get near. Uh, he played for, you know, several top, tier teams in both Super Rugby and the Premiership, which is, again, an achievement that most people won't even get near. But in terms of uh, reaching that potential that was shown early on, uh, you'd say it was probably one that kind of um, didn't quite fit the um, the expectations. But yeah, um, uh, he's got a profile on his current employer's website, which is why I was able to see that he's... Um, He's, uh, he's working for an accounting firm, so he seems pretty pretty happy to have changed vocation and um, got himself settled in his current career, so I wish him all the best. It is gutting when you see a career that is so affected by injury, five shoulder reconstructions, hamstring injuries, and whatnot is, uh, is a bit disappointing, but as I mentioned, becoming a test player and spending pretty much 10 years as a professional rugby player is, uh, is more than most people even get near. So, yep, Winston Stanley is the first of those four guys from that 2009 class we're going to have a look at. I think next time we'll probably have a look at uh, at Richard Kingy to see how his career goes in comparison. But, um, yeah, you guys let me know your thoughts. Do you remember Winston Stanley from his time at the Force or his time at Quinns? I don't really recall much of his time at the Blues, if I am honest, or at Auckland, but it is... It is quite some time ago. So anyway, you guys have any thoughts and I'll talk to you guys soon. See you later.